welcome back to another episode of Medicinas podcast series i'm your host Chetvi Shah and today we continue our insightful conversation with Dr. Ankur Masani an expert in emergency medicine this is our second episode with him and we are so thrilled to have him back today and today we are diving into a crucial topic which is chest pain in emergency medicine and in, in emergency room particularly So did you know that chest pain is the second most common complaint in adult emergency department in the US accounting for over 5 to 8% of all ED visits and i'm sure it's not just US but globally as well and with such high numbers fit and accurate assessment is very critical so let's get started and hear from dr ankur about how emergency medical medicine professionals tackle this challenge every day uh, so welcome dr ankur it is such a pleasure to so have much. you back sir thank, thank you uh, so doctor to start with uh, chest pain is one of the most frequent and potentially life threatening presentations in in the er so when a patient arrives with chest pain what key factors guide your initial assessment to rapidly differentiate between cardiac and non cardiac causes yeah so uh... chest pain is one of the uh, symptoms that presenting emergency department uh, department uh, patient in a day or night every time and it was the most common uh, presentation in er the first responsibility of er physician is to rule out the life threatening causes of the chest pain which is caused in a uh, cardiac emergencies and no is a non cardiac emergency there are i would say that there are six uh, uh, six causes the big six we cause usually first is a uh, acute coronary syndrome second is a uh, aortic dissection third is a pulmonary embolism tension pneumothorax fourth one fifth one cardiac tamponade and sixth one is esophageal rupture the six the big causes can lead to uh, if not treated appropriately not treated urgently and not addressed uh, 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 within a time period the patient can lead to a uh, uh, catastrophic events and can even die also so first uh, utmost goal of the emergency physician is to to rule out this six uh, six things and usually to make it a, uh, like a habit we usually follow the abc vip protocols what is the like a uh, we have we have made like a, every chest pain is vip and we, emergency physicians always start with abcs so we call as abc vips means a is airway b is breathing c is circulations check for the in, in, is there any hemodynamic instability or not airway deteriorated breathing circulation and all that get v vip means v for vitals get the vitals and if any address if a hypotension tachycardia tachyarrhythmia tach, uh, tachypnea is there something like that address it i is the immediate get the ecgs within 10 minutes get the ecgs check for is there any stt changes any uh, ischemic changes or not or not and p is for like primary survey and focus histories like uh, get the again abcds and we call a mnemonic or opqrs like uh, a brief histories of the patient like oh, how the pain started how is the progress is is there any any other uh, quality of the pain severity is there any uh, radiation is there, there or not any uh, factors we are helping or supporting or increasing the pain so on any risk factors like previous any cardiac uh, histories uh, family histories a patient have a diabetic uh, a patient have a hypertension are they uh, uh, taking any consumption of alcohol smoking or any other familial uh, history of any cardiac disease so take the brief histories focus this and we get to the bedside investigations like uh, troponin versus the pocus along with the ecgs so how this we rule out these things within our uh, once the patient arrived to emergency department we rule out these things in within 10 to 15 minutes uh, get the ecgs get the brief histories brief uh, examination findings risk factors and make a plan is the patient is high risk patient is the patient is a moderate patient or the patient is a severe, uh, low risk patient and according to that we start uh, rule out the things yeah i think that's fascinating and it is it actually highlights how critical those few moments of uh, so, first few 10 15 minutes are in the er yeah, so we call as a golden hour and out yeah. of that golden hour the first initial crisp minute once the patient mm-hmm. arrived to emergency room we discuss uh, with the, the golden period minutes yeah those golden hours actually really critical as well Uh, so now doctor emergency room is equipped with various uh, diagnostic tools like you know ecgs cardiac biomarkers and imaging so how do you determine the right sequence and combination of tests to efficiently diagnose the cause of chest pain 
so uh, as we discussed in last uh, uh, last uh, last question that we divide into three groups high risk moderate risk low risk so those patient with high risk some family history classical history ecg findings we get the ecgs we get the bi biomarkers get the bedside uh, echocardiography for to see the any regional wall abnormalities there not and urgent make a uh, discussion with the cardiologist and if required activate the cath lab as well also those who are a moderate risk patients we get the uh, detailed stress testing like stress echo or uh, uh, stress uh, a treadmill test later on after the one or two days or something the full detailed echocardiographies and those who are the low risk patient nothing to look like any cardiac patient them we definitely get the serial ecgs or tropis and even then they are negatives we follow with the cardiology team as well also in a opd basis not in urgent thing but definitely we do the follow with the cardiology team as well also so how do we divide the things and then make a, a plan after utilizing all the resources yeah i think that makes so much sense i think either balance is really essential yes, absolutely. and crucial absolutely. in your er yeah. Um, yeah. So now, doctor, we know that you know women and diabetic patients often exhibit, um, I think, atypical symptoms of acute coronary correct. syndromes. Correct. Correct. So, correct. which uh, which can actually sometimes lead to a missed diagnosis also. So, what Absolutely. strategies Absolutely. do you use to ensure these cases are not overlooked? Yes, of course. The diabetic patients and the women usually mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the uh, symptoms are very vague. Uh, maybe the patient with just a, a discomfort, a nausea, a fatigue, a dizziness, something like that. And they, uh, for to make it a, a diagnose this kind of patient, we have to make a high suspicious things. We have to take the, all the risk factors in the mind, high suspicious of that. And in, emer uh, in emergency medicine, there are multiple scores and the uh, scales are available. In cardiac, there is a heart score uh, and there is a TME score as well also. So whenever there is kind of patient who is there, we appropriately apply this kind of scores when there's a patient with there. Even we require, we do the repeat ECGs and um, uh, repeat tropi as well also. Once the tropi is negative, it doesn't mean that you are rule out the cardiac thing. Only thing, sometimes the major things are uh, usually present in uh, ECGs. So in this kind of patients, we mm -hmm. already do the, uh, use the utilizing of scores, scales, uh, high suspicious things, and uh, uh, ultimately the repeat uh, uh, ECGs and tropi. That help us how to make a diagnosis mm -hmm. in this kind of patients. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that is something that uh, typical uh, symptoms presentations can be actually deceptive also. So it's really important to be extra vigilant here. Yes. Uh, so then okay, when cardiac causes are ruled out, when you mentioned earlier, uh, the next challenges is, uh, challenges, you know, diagnosis and managing non-cardiac chest pain, yes. which can stem from, you know, gastrointestinal, musculoskeletal, or even psychological factors. So how do you approach these cases? Yeah, so uh, uh, once the life threatening rule out, uh, causes are ruled out, we mm -hmm. can think about the gastrointestinal causes, pulmonary causes, even the muscular skeletal causes also. Uh, GRD, uh, gastritis, can present as a chest pain as well, also. Pneumonia, again, can present as a chest pain as well, also. Some patient had went to the gym or some had an exercise and can stretch or pull out of the muscle and can present as a musculoskeletal uh, uh, pain as well, also. And ultimately, uh, anxiety or panic attack can also present with a uh, chest pain but anxiety and the panic attack is a diagnosis of exclusion that should be not never should be on the first uh, on the our list what's the life threatening causes other the metabolic and then the medicinal causes and then ultimately if we can't find a figure out the thing and it's a uh, history suggests you then we will label it as a, like a um, uh, anxiety causes are like that but in our uh, that, that should be an uh there should be no uh, over investigation should be also there when you think a suspicion something like that there, it should be no, never over investigation or never under investigation. You should make a balance between that in all the investigation to make the non-cardiac causes of the chest pain. Correct. I know that's a great perspective. So now, doctor, why you know clinical prote uh, protocols provide essential guidance? Uh, the ER often presents uh, ambiguous cases, less strict mm -hmm. adherence to guidelines might not always be feasible. So how do you balance protocols with individual clinical judgment in such situations? So when you work in the emergency room, uh, there should be a, a first user trust yourself and your gut feeling should be always the, the first thing. 
once you feel this patient is having a, a definitely cardiac cases you should be there should be always there is the one have a, a gut feeling and you should be uh, respect your gut feeling first second thing whatever the results are there and what is the plan is the next for there discuss with the patient as well also suppose the first uh, first ecg is normal then you discuss mm -hmm. you think uh, this patient require my gut feeling is that they should be required a more observation more monitoring then uh, then get the discuss with the patient relative as well also yeah i want you to keep in my emergency room for next couple of hours i want to do the uh, serial ecgs to definitely uh, uh, keep you safe in a safe environment Take a, your colleague or your see the new uh, book I, I, in, uh, in medical world there's every patient having a like a new book so you uh, get your experience from your colleague uh, discuss with the patients relative regarding the plans and ultimately your gut feeling that helps more in the emergency room correct correct uh can you share like if you can share one typical case of something that had happened uh, uh with you know cardiac uh, chest yeah. pain or cardiac so yeah pain. so what happened and recently uh mm -hmm. a 32 year male patient uh had a chest pain and, and mm -hmm. uh, he uh looked like he's a gastritis or uh, not uh, comfortable so he spoke with his uh, one of the uh, family physician on the phone and got us somewhere ECG as well also, but no, was not able to read the ECG at that time at night. So he had uh, the uh, antacid medications and um, uh, routine medications, but his symptom doesn't settle. And he came to our emergency room in the morning. And when he approached to us on ECG findings, there was severe uh, acute coronary syndrome, ST elevation MI. And uh, while uh, getting, taking a brief history within a two minutes, he had a massive cardiac arrest. Uh, we resuscitated him, uh, we uh, all the apply our protocols and everything and he go, uh, received uh, the, back to the like, uh, ROAC, we could uh, receive back to our cardiac heart, uh, revive again after the five, uh, six minutes, uh, directly send it to the cath labs and by the uh, God, uh, uh, grace of God, I would say uh, within three days, he discharged home by walking. He was oh. fully conscious, no neurological uh, discomfort to him. Uh, is all his memories intact? Uh, uh, he himself walked back to the hospitals, and he at the end he just thanked me, okay, uh, doctor, uh, because of the all this, I am able to the uh, living a second life. He had a uh, beautiful three daughters, and it happened recently. So I just remind me of my memories that uh, we, if we apply protocol based, we apply. Our, it was our gut feeling that no, this patient uh, required this kind of management, all these things, and we saved that particular thing him. Yeah, I think for especially for emergency specialists, it's really important to actually yes. do it uh, on their toes all the time. And what is actually that gut feeling yes. and, as mentioned by you, yes. it's really important Absolutely. because it's like a life and death kind of situation all the yes. time. It's, a, it's a, like I guess, a, a war room. Uh, yeah. like a, you don't know when the war is coming, uh, but you have to be on toes and every time, 365 right. days, prepared for that. Correct, correct. <laughs> Now, yes, finally, yes, doctor, yes. For, for patients who are discharged with um, non-cardiac uh, chest pain, what key information and follow-up plans do you provide to ensure their safety and understanding? Yes. So, first is a, uh, we explain the diagnosis. What exactly going on there? Uh, anxiety is not never always a cause mm -hmm. of that. It should be a, a, at the if I, if I might make a list, it will be at the bottom of the list. The anxiety there. Uh, explain that what is the diagnosis and what the care management plan have with them. Discuss the red flag signs. Mm -hmm. Suppose the patient chest pain persists or something kind of breathlessness uh, you on any uh, uh, breathlessness on exertion or chest pain or perspiration. Any kind of this uh, red flag signs come to immediately uh, report to the nearest ER. Not I say to the my ER wherever the ER is there. Come to go to the nearest ER because there are time is the ultimately money. And mm -hmm. uh, if everything is settled down, no, no, that we arrange the follow up as well. Also, uh, follow up. Uh, I would say a patient coming to the emergency room at a night, a night and after rollouting out the uh, uh, causes of the chest pains or the non cardiac, then that doesn't mean that patient is now safe. We have to arrange his other further care of in the morning as well. Also, which are the tests we require particularly, and how that we plan this uh, as a care. So care ends not at the night where the reports are normal, ECG is normal. Normal ECG, normal tropi doesn't mean the patient doesn't have any cardiac history. You have to rule out in detail about it, particular this thing. And ultimately, uh, you have to explain the lifetime guidelines, guidelines as well also. Sometimes the uh, cessation of smoking, the risk factors, uh, controlling the, uh, the illnesses like diabetes or uh, blood pressure, 
uh, strict with the medication regime exercise you have to be uh, give the guidance at any every time because once this started they you can get the uh, rehab things and the prevent the complication of these things i think that's really valuable doctor and i think proper yes. discharge education is really important and Absolutely. health patient and we, we, we discuss, control. Yeah, we yeah. discuss with them as well also we and mention on the uh, the discharge paper as well also so ultimately once even they go home uh, they read the things they can understand yeah this i want to understand and follow the next from like starting thing yeah i think that's really important to take proper care also after mm -hmm. discharge uh, so doctor as we wrap up today's session let me tell you that this has been such an insightful conversation and the way you have broken down, you know, the approach to chest pain in ER really sheds light on the critical decision. Actually, uh, emergency physician make every day. So thank you so much for sharing thank that. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, and to our listeners, thank you for tuning into yet another episode of Medicine Apps podcast series. And remember, if you're a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions, do not hesitate to join us on the Medicine Apps platform. Medicinas platform is not just a resource, it's a dynamic space where you can connect with the medical peers, participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. So until next time, stay informed and stay healthy.